in our pocket, we are not being moved by the Holy Spirit. We're trying to use the Spirit rather than letting the Spirit use us. And any, any resistance to the Holy Spirit shuts off the flow of energy. That's right. Another interpretation for buying is here given in the note. It says we must buy. Be zealous and repent. This mm -hmm. buying represents our need of repentance, of exchange, we talk of about, change. We talk about buying here. I think of the wise and foolish virgins. Why weren't the, 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 the wise virgins Christian enough to give their fellow uh, uh, sisters, or if you could put it that way, some of their oil? Because they couldn't. It wasn't something that you can give to another person. Yeah. You have to buy it by making an experience of faith with Jesus Christ. Go and buy from the exchangers. Yeah. It's a personal <laughs> effort. So here we have, who is the great exchanger though? It's Jesus, Jesus Christ. That's right. Which exchanger are you going to buy from? Mm. Yeah, the one that gives you ropes of sand or the one that gives you a rope into heaven? <laughs> All right. So let's consider our condition before God, the note brings out, and let us heed the counsel of the true witness. And that is not live in denial anymore. Mm -hmm. Jesus as judge. Now we come to this point about the judgment. Who is the judge in the judgment and how does all this work? And we'd like to try to go a little further than perhaps even the lesson is bringing out here as we study this part. How did Christ become judge of all mankind? Now that's a very important question, and we're going to ask Brother De La Paz what is revealed in the lesson to answer that question. Yes, in John chapter 5, verse 22, it says, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And so uh, it is very clear here that uh, the Father uh, gave the Son the, the power and the authority to judge us. You know? For as the Father had life in himself, so that he given, had given to the Son to have life in himself, and had given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. And in John 5.30, I can of mine own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So that gives a balance there that God is still in the picture. Yeah. He's doing the will of the Father that has sent him. But I want to emphasize one particular phrase. It says, because he is the son of what? Man. Man. Son of man. What do you have to say about that? I want to say that Jesus, by becoming human, is able to assess our thoughts and our feelings and our attitude as humans. I read years ago about one practice in, I guess, in some country in the West that before someone could exercise the, the chair of being judge, they needed to spend some time in jail. Mm -hmm. They would spend time in jail eating the food that the prisoners eat, dressing as a prisoner, living in a cell, and to no one's, no one knew that that person really was going to be judge, but they were as a prisoner in jail for a certain extended time. And this was done so that the judge would then know when he gave a sentence mm -hmm. of how one person feels to be in prison. If he sent someone for a year, for two years, he had been in jail. He knew what it was like. Mm -hmm. And so Christ can really estimate and determine whether we have been faithful according to the knowledge we've had or we have not been faithful. There's no one that can estimate the feelings in man, as in the book of John says, he needed no man to tell him what was in man because he knew what was in man. And so he is equipped to be judged. But I want us to think a moment that the Father is not out of the picture. In Testimonies to Ministers, page 246, page 246, it says that God himself assumes towards the sin bearer the character of the judge. God the Father judged Christ. I mean, when Jesus died on the cross, it was the Father who was there looking at him. It was the Father who bowed down his head. When Jesus resurrected, Mary Magdalene came and she wanted to touch Christ. And Christ says, no, touch me. I haven't ascended to the Father. Why was he going to ascend to the Father? To see if his sacrifice had been accepted. 
Yes. So in order for his sacrifice to be accepted, the father needed to act as judge. And when we go to the book of Daniel, chapter 7, the father is presented as the ancient of days. And we cite that as Adventists in, in Daniel chapter 7. And the ancient of days did sit and the judgment started. The son of man hasn't entered the picture yet. The judgment has started. He is the ancient of days. And then the son of man is brought on to him. Mm -hmm. Into this judgment. So in a way... The Father presides in the judgment. And that is what the book uh, Great Controversy says on page 479. The Ancient of Days presides in the judgment. But Jesus is the one who determines who goes to heaven and who doesn't. Well, he, he acts like himself. Judgment. He's the mm -hmm. one who separates the sheep from the goats. Yes, yeah. he separates the sheep right. from the goats. But there is someone overlooking, making sure that everything is done right. The witnesses are the angels. And Christ is also a witness on our behalf. Yeah. But as you were, we were talking before we started the lesson, Christ is what? He is the lamb. He is the, uh, the priest. He is the, the judge. He, he is everything. He's the, the witness, witness the, the advocate. Right. But the Father is present. And there's another testimony that says that when the second or the third phase um, the second phase of the judgment comes in, which is the sentencing, mm -hmm. the great white throne, that Christ will sit on the throne. Mm -hmm. And he will declare the sentence unto everyone. And then he will go on to the next phase, which is the execution. And in the Greek, you have a certain word for investigation. It is krisis in Greek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have a certain word for the sentencing, which is krima. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation chapter 20, the word is krima. Mm -hmm. In Revelation chapter 14, it's krisis. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we have these three words, actually, in Greek that give the three different phases. So we see that God hath given to him authority to execute the judgment because he is the son of man, because he has tasted yes, the right. very dregs of human affliction and temptation. I like to think of Christ himself being in prison. In what kind of prison? Yeah. He was, in, you know, here was this... Locked in space and time? Yes, in a human body. <laughs> yes, in a human body. Yeah, yes. he was in prison. God limited himself. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, well, that was to save us. So Christ humbled himself to stand at the head of humanity. Now, we need to humble ourselves, and that's the call of the lesson, mm -hmm. that we as Laodiceans might know our true ex experience, our condition, and accept it. And um, as the note brings out, make some effort. Well, question five, we need to go on. First of all, what was the purpose of Jesus for mankind? In reality, how does each individual judge himself? Now, that's a big thought here. Brother De La Paz, how do you read this? How do you understand? How would you like to explain it? Yes, uh, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this is uh, the uh, unfathomable uh, love of the Father uh, and the Son to us. And, uh, and if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. So this is the uh, a part of uh, for us sinners that he did not condemn us uh, right away, but uh, he gave us the chance to repent and then uh, be renewed by his Holy Spirit so that we will be able to attain this, uh, this uh, salvation through Jesus Christ by faith. So uh, this is a, a very good uh, sign, an example of the, the love of the Father and Jesus himself for us. Uh, being a sinner, it is really uh, very hard for us to reach the, the righteousness or to attain the righteousness. So it is very uh, important for us uh, uh, people, men, to have Jesus Christ in our life. So we obtain that righteousness not by any works that we do, but by yielding to the righteousness which is of Christ. And he clothes us with that righteousness. So in their attitude toward Christ, the note brings out, all would show on which side they stand or stood. So that is the, the key. What is it that we're doing with Jesus? As um, what shall I do with Jesus? Behold yeah. the man. You know, Pilate says those famous words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The father's going to ask one question in the day of judgment. What have you done with my son? That's right. <laughs> what did you do with my son? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's that parable of the vineyard again. I mm -hmm. sent the prophets, and I finally he sent his son. And what yeah. did they do? Killed him. Yeah, well, you know, we're not doing that literally today, but we have to be careful that we're not doing that in a, in a, in a different way, by denying yes, him in our actions and in the way If we're we... Christians, we should not go into the world to condemn the world. We should go to save. And we can fall into this trap. And Sister White in Testimonies to the Church, Volume 9, writes to actually the publishing department in Loma Linda. She's writing from Loma Linda, writing to the publishing department. And she says, look, don't take the judgment seat. Don't be so critical. If you are trying to pick out all the faults in your brother or your sister, you're not taking time to reform yourself. You're going to be found wanting. And it's the same with us as an organization. To pick out the faults of other churches and everything, is that our work? I don't think so. We're here to present Christ. The truth is, is in Him. Yeah. And we need to be careful that we're elevating humanity with our message, not condemning. So, wherefore, Jesus said... Shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven? What scene do we now transfer to? Because we have a time of salvation. We have a time of grace. But our, brudge, our, our, our lesson is bridging now into the, the next phase of the judgment. What do we see? As sinners accused by Satan before God, whom can we choose to defend us in this time? We can only choose Jesus. Jesus is the only advocate. There is no other advocate. But when we try to be justifiers of ourselves, who's our, who's our, who's our we're, advocate? We're trying to defend ourselves. And what was the saying you told me the other day that, that the lawyers say when someone tries to defend themselves in court? He who has himself uh, for uh, a lawyer has a client. Uh, as a, a fool, fool for a client. As a fool for a client. So we become foolish when we try to defend ourselves. We need Christ to, to defend us. We need yeah. to tell him the truth. This is the truth. So I like to say uh, something that someone told me once, and that is uh, love does not need justification. Mm -hmm. And sin cannot have, be justified. Mm -hmm. So if we're trying to justify ourselves, that we're in the wrong place. We're in the wrong business. That's Christ's business. And the note brings out that he has not lost any case. That's that we right. can go to him. He is a great physician. He is a great advocate. There's another thing we need to put in here, and that is we can justify God. And how do we do that? By accepting the justification of Jesus Christ. And we're vindicating the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of the gospel in our own lives, when we determine to make a difference in this world. Not just to take, not to make the church uh, beholden to us, mm -hmm. but that we are here for the church. Someone has said, you can tell a person who's con con converted or not. The church is here for the unconverted, but the converted is here for the church. Yeah. To preach the gospel is to leave the gospel. Yes, that's right. So how can we repent? How can the repentant sinner approach the throne of grace? Brother Delapaz, we'll take you um, for a little tour of this thought. How can we approach it? With our own righteousness, with what we've done, or what? No, we can approach the throne of grace uh, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and then by our faith, and then the righteousness of Jesus Christ is what uh, the Father sees in us. And how should we approach the throne? Uh, timidly or uh, tiptoeing in? What does it say? No, we must uh, decide now. Salvation is today, and uh, we must not uh, procrastinate and, uh, like other people do. That's why they uh, cannot receive the, these blessings. So it is high time for us now to repent from our sins, have sorrow for sins, and turn away from these things. And then uh, we will be renewed by God, according, or by Jesus Christ, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that we will be new, and then we will keep on obeying His laws, and we will keep on obeying His will, and then that is the time that we will be changed. Yeah. The scripture says, uh, Pastor Watts, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. Now, if you're a father or you're a mother and you have your own business and you're in your office in the back in your business, the clients just can't come all the way to the back to see you. But your child can. They can boldly come and say, Dad, Mom. They can interrupt. 
Your dad owns a business. You know that, right? Yes, you can come. I can see you as a little, you like have, a little kid. Yeah. One have time the you were a little kid and dad was in the back. You could just walk right in, right? Right. That's walk the right picture in. you have. Yes, and now when we sit in a, in a board meeting and one of my little Shiloh comes in, she can boldly come in. That's my dad. I have a right to come in. And we must have that relationship with Jesus. He is our older brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is our Savior. He has been united to us closer than our closest kin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has come to us, and so we can boldly come to Him. We have a right to come to Him because Isn't of who He is, not because of who we are, but yeah. because of who he became, who He became. He became our closest kin yeah. right. in order to redeem us. I read a, a little bit of a, of a book recently, that, and I can't remember exactly where it was, but it says, uh, being a different person is a decision. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a different person, you just may, need to make the decision. Then the rest of your life is to carry out that decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the same thing we must do here. We must make the decision that Jesus is my Savior. Yes. And He has died to take my sins. He's paid for it. Yeah. Therefore, what hinders me from boldly accepting that, and then the rest of my life is just yielding to the fact that that's a fact. Yielding to the fact that that's a fact. Mm -hmm. So he is the only, it is only through Jesus, whom the Father gave for the life of the world, that the sinner may find access to God. But when we find access to God, what else, else do we find? We find peace. We find purpose. We find pardon. Uh, pardon. We find power. Power. Our lives become organized. They Perseverance. Become, they become uh, full of hope, and they become a blessing to those around us. So as we close this lesson now, as we think about what we have studied, um, what, are, what are the thoughts that you have as you've looked at this lesson? What is the title of the lesson? He is our um, witness. Witness. witness, our judge, our judge and our advocate. And advocate. Yes, so when we think about that, that he is there for us, that Jesus is the faithful witness, that he and is true witness. The true witness. He is the Alpha. He is the Amen of and, and the beginning and the yeah. end. So when we think about that and we put our lives centered in Christ, when we realize that He is all and in all, let our lives be yes and no for Jesus Christ. Amen. So may the Lord bless us as we study together this lesson. The message to the Church of Laodicea is startling in its denunciation that the lesson brings out. And but it is applicable to us as a people. Let's not deny it. Let's live uh, a changed life through the power that Jesus has given us. We are addressed in this lesson, and let us take it personally and without feeling uh, what I would say um, uh, bound up or um, how would you put it, you know, when a person is hesitant. Under, not just hesitant, but it's more than uncertain. that. Not the, just uncertain. Uh, I'm talking about we become uh, frozen. Oh, you know, we can't be frozen. Uh, we can't be, um, uh, you know, so bound up by the, the condemnation that is ours. We must realize that though we have been condemned because of the sin in our own lives and yeah. the sin of, uh, that has come into the world through uh, the first sin, that we have been made free in Jesus Christ. When there was sin, there was and is a Savior. And that should free us. Free us from what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Shall make you powerful to overcome sin, because sin has nothing in you, as, as, the, as Jesus said when he talked about that the devil cometh to him and find nothing in him. May the Lord help us that we come to that point, and it's that battle we talked about at the beginning, the battle of Armageddon, which really begins in our hearts and minds. May the Lord help us to know a victory in that battle, and that victory has been won by our captain and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you have anything you would like to close with, brother? Yes, uh, put your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Yeah. The author and the finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen.